and smoke. Brought to you by Ellen M. Porter. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M. Superior taste. Superior filter. America's best filter tip cigarette. Around that city and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. <laughs> story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> What do you want? Coffee. A pot of it, if you don't mind. Coffee. Mr. Green. Yeah, Joe. Now, look here, cowboy. Sandy King's the name, Mr. Green. Don't you, Mr. Green, me. Okay. Hank, what's on your mind? Feeding you is on my mind. You've been eating here a whole week on credit, and you ain't paid a cent. Of course not. What do you mean, of course not? When a man eats on credit, he ain't supposed to pay, is he? Now you look here. I'm broke, Hank. I'm broker than you are. Look at this place. I ain't got enough customers to pay for the water. The food's bad, Hank. That's the whole trouble. You've been eating it a whole week, you buzzard. (laughs) Now it ain't that bad. (laughs) Sandy, you got more nerve than any man I ever met. But nerve ain't money, and I can't afford to feed you no more. So that's that. Well, now, Hank, maybe I have been kind of taking advantage of you. <laughs> You've got a real easy way of putting things. I'll make up for it. How? Oh. Go out there and fire that drunken cook you got. I'll take over for a week. How's that? You take over what? Cooking? Yeah. Well, how do I know you're any better than he is? Well, I'm not drunk. That'll be some improvement, won't it? I don't know. But you're right, he is a drunk. I'll do it. But you better be good. Only one way to find out. Chester, good food is no excuse for hog manners. Any way a man can get it down is fair, the way I see it. But you're not the one who has to see it. We are. Oh, Doc, I didn't eat tea. The first good food we've had in Delmonico in years. Uh, hello, Miss Kitty. Chester, Doc. Hello. How are you getting on here? Fine. I've eaten here three times a day for a week, and it's getting better and better. Yeah, that cook of yours was a real fine, huh? Yeah, he's a good boy, Sandy is. I'm going to put him on pay after today, and I'm going to pay him well, too. Are you sure? Well, what with the trail herd starting to arrive, you're going to get rich with him out in the kitchen, Hank. <laughs> they, they say the word's gone clean to Texas already. Yeah, things are sure changed around here. Yeah, I hear you put a leg iron on him at night and chain him to the bed. <laughs> I think I'll start doing that. <laughs> Ray, you ready to leave, Chester? I don't know whether I can move or not. Well, uh, maybe you better try, Chester. Hank's got other customers waiting. Oh, that's all right, Miss Kitty. Uh, we have to go anyway. Yeah, but we'll be back this evening. Okay. Come early, avoid the ride. I'll be here at sundown. Good, good. Bye now. Bye. Hey, waiter. Oh, no. Waiter, come on over here. Hey, Joe. Yes, sir. You better go over and see what that man wants. Hey, wait. I, mean, I, I was sitting to clean his table off, Mr. Green. Oh, take care of him first. Yes, sir. I'll get somebody else to clean the table. Well, it's about time. What's the trouble? I told you I wanted these here eggs turned over. Oh, so you take him back. 
And you just be quick about it. Ain't gonna sit here all day. You know, I just got things that we've got to eat, and you ordered it. Never mind what I ordered. Just take them away and bring them back done right, you hear? All right, all right. And don't take all day with me. bring cold food, I don't have enough work to do. Hey, Sandy, the man wants his eggs turned over. I ain't got time. You better. He's pretty mean about it. I don't care how mean he is. What do you order eggs for anyway? We ain't serving breakfast. He's half drunk. Maybe he thinks it's breakfast. All right. Here. There. They're turned over. Take them back to him. Oh, no, no, Sandy, now. You just make him mad. He wanted them cooked more. I turned them over like he asked, didn't I? No, yeah, but... He uh, won't know the difference. Well, maybe not, but what if he does? Then tell him to go eat someplace else. Okay, Sandy, but I, I don't think that you can fool him even if he is half drunk. Yeah. Uh, where was I... Oh, yeah, one steak. Beans. Potatoes. Hey, cook. What do you want? That was awful smart. What you done? I told you it'd make you mad. Nobody fools me like that. Now, you wanted your eggs turned over, didn't you? I'll show you what I think of your eggs. <laughs> <laughs> you oh. yes, Now look what you've done. That'll teach him to shove his eggs in my face. Ah, oh, but you could have killed him with that skillet. Uh, throw some water on him and get him out of here. Well, now, wait a minute. What? Sandy. He's dead. What? You killed him. Yeah. Oh. Look, uh, don't tell nobody about this. Are you crazy? I mean, for a while. Uh, give me a half hour. I've got a horse over at the stable. They'll never catch me. Oh, but what's uh, Sandy? Uh, say goodbye to Hank Green for me. Everybody else in Dodge, for that matter. Including you, huh? Oh, my goodness, yes. But he's the best cook Del Monaco's ever had. And maybe it was just an accident like that waiter said. Even so, Chester, he killed a man. He's got a sand trial for it. <laughs> Mr. Dunn, that sun's getting mighty low. Can you still see the tracks? Yeah, they lead toward that hill over there. Let's move. What if we don't find him before dark? We'll have to sleep on the prairie and pick up his trail in the morning. Hold up, Chester. My land. All right, that's the longest, strongest out bunch of cattle I saw in quite a spell. Not going to be much help to us. If it was a river, we could swim across. There's nothing to do but wait. Mr. Dillon, here come one of the men. Maybe he saw Sandy. Hello. Howdy. Dodge? Yeah. Hey, you're a lawman. Dillon, U.S. Marshal. My name's Purdy. I'm trail boss of this outfit. What are you doing out here, Marshal? Looking for a man, but your herd cut right across his trail. Well, maybe he's seen us coming, done it on purpose. Well, he's smart enough. Well, I always like to see a man get away. Nothing personal, Marshal. I understand. How's the cattle market in Dodge, Marshal? Holding up, holding up fine. Good. This ain't no trail to ride for the fun of it. Well, I better get on up ahead and tell them to start milling the herd. It'll be dark before long. I don't like to push cattle after dark. I appreciate you not trying to cut through them, Marsh. We can wait. Say, uh, I hear there's a good cook in Dodge for a change. A fella come down the trail yesterday, told us about it. Yeah, there was. Well, he's still there? Uh, he's the man we're after. Oh. Well, the men were kind of looking forward to a good meal, Marshal. He killed a man, pretty. I'm sorry to hear that. I... I'll tell the man, but they ain't gonna like it, Marshal. I'll tell him I don't like it either. Yeah. Well, so long. Uh, you'd think Sandy King was only good cook in Kansas. Well, you know a better one. Well, 
Well, sir, I don't guess I do. Mr. Stone, you, you think we lost his trail? Well, if we ever got across there, we might pick it up. We'll have to make camp and wait for daylight. <laughs> Feed and rest and be on our way. You stop right there. Uh, what? What do you want here? Well, say something. Uh, I, I ain't gonna harm you. How could you? I got a shotgun, ain't I? Now, don't be scared, miss. I ain't gonna hurt you. That's close enough. All right. How come you put your horse in our barn? I had to get him out of the sun, didn't I? Uh... You don't mind if I rest a minute before moving on? Well, uh, I guess it's all right. Now, you don't need that shotgun. Must be getting kind of heavy. Well, uh, I, I didn't know who you was. My name's Sandy. What's yours? Effie. Gus Jayhorn's my pa. I guess you've heard of him. Can't say as I have. Is he around someplace? He rode north today. We got a water hole up by Shale Bluff. Oh. And your ma? I never knew my ma. Effie, uh, you got any cold water up the house? Yes, we do. Uh, could I have some? If it's not too much bother, I'm terrible thirsty. I guess it would be all right. And there's no bother to it. Come on. You know something, Effie? What? I don't really need that drink of water. You don't? I was passing by through the trees there, and I seen you come out of the house. I wanted to say hello, that's all. I wanted to meet you, Effie. What, what for? Because you're the prettiest gal I ever seen. Oh, well, you must know lots of gals. No, no, I'm a lonely man, Effie. Mighty lonely man. A drifter, Effie. I guess I never found no reason to settle down. But that's bad for a person. I mean, everybody should have somebody. Don't you think? Well, that ain't always easy to find, Effie. No. No, it sure ain't. I've heard of it happening, though. Just like that, when you least expect it. Right out of a clear blue sky. Tell me about it. All right. All right, I'll tell you about it, Effie. Come on in the house, Sandy. All right, mister. Oh, oh. oh don't shoot him. I heard you cooing in here. Look, Mr. Strayhorn. It's not what you think. I wondered whose horse that was in the barn. How long you known this boy? We just met Pa. I'd shoot you right here, boy. But I don't want to mess up the place. I'll get outside. Pa, please, listen to if me. you don't want to watch this, stay in the house, Effie. Pa, you can't shoot a man for one kid. That's all right, Effie. You can't stop him. Nobody can stop me. Outside. Pa, please. Please listen to me. Pa, he didn't do anything. Please, Pa, I must... Now, you move right over there, mister. That's far enough. Pa. Pa, please. Hold up. What's going on here? Well, you won't shoot him now, Pa. You know this man? You're Marshal Dillon, ain't you? That's right, and I'll put that gun away. Okay. But that don't mean I ain't gonna kill him. He don't know me, Marshal. He don't know nothing about me. You mean he's wanted by the law for murder? Oh, no. He's a murderer to boot. Gal, you sure can pick him, can't you? <laughs> well, Sandy, looks like we got here just in time, doesn't it? To save me for a hanging? A court will decide that. Where's your horse? In the barn. Go get it, Chester. Yes, sir. Well, he sure made himself right to home. There's gall for you, ain't it? Let's go, Sandy. Hey, 
Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what, Chester? Come here. Look out yonder. They're forming a mob. Yeah, looks like those trail hands we ran across on the prairie. Purdy's men. The word sure does get around fast, don't it? When it comes to trouble, it does. We ain't back in town five minutes, and there they are. And all over Sandy, just because he's a good cook. It also gives them a chance to show up the law if they can. And they're always wanting to do that, ain't they? If they could force me to turn Sandy loose, they'd have a free hand in this town. But they haven't got it yet. What are you going to do with that shotgun? You stay inside. Yes, sir. Sandy King is in jail because he killed a man. And he'll stay there until he gets a trial. Men want him out, Marshal. Now, Bertie, I'm afraid I can't oblige him. Are all these your men? Some of them. I reckon most of mine are here, Marshal. I didn't expect to find a man like you taking part in a mob. They tell me some drunk throwed a plate of eggs in that cook's face, Marshal. That's no reason to kill a man. Well, the cook did hit him. But they say he didn't mean to kill him. Yeah. You'll get a trial and a fair one. I can't help you, Marshal. The men want him out. Marshal, Marshal, you got yourself ten minutes. Now, if Santa King ain't out here in ten minutes, we're going to start shooting. Then so do I. Now, ten minutes, men. That's all he's got. <laughs> Bad, don't you, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Well, I locked up out back. Nobody can't get in there without us hearing them. Good. What are you doing with that shotgun? Well, if there's going to be a shooting, I ain't going to get left out of it. This is a part of the game you don't have to sit in on, Chester. Well, it's all right. I ain't got nothing else to do. You Marshal Dillon? I am. I'm John Grizzard, Marshal. Texas Rangers. Can I come in? Come on in. I just pulled into town. What's the mob for? Trail hands trying to show up the law. What can I do for you? Well, I got a warrant here, Marshal. I heard the man was headed toward Dodge. Let me see it. Hmm. You know him? He's dead, cousin. Dead? What is it, Mr. Dillon? This is an arrest warrant for Ed Fisher. As a reward, dead or alive. Ed Fisher? Oh, I'll be doggone. Who killed him? Man, I got locked up in jail for it, Sandy King. You know what that crowd's all about? Yeah. Your prisoner seems to be a popular man, Marshal. He's a good cook. He's a good cook? Chester, go tell Sandy the news and let him out as soon as I break up this mob. Yes, sir. Come with me, Grizzle. Me. This is Joe Grissom, Texas Ranger. He just brought me a warrant for the arrest of Ed Fisher. That's the man Sandy killed. He was wanted, dead or alive. Why'd you turn him loose, Marshal? He's got no reason to hold him, man. All right. All right. I got no choice. I'll turn Sandy loose. But first, but first you break this mob up and get out of here. We want him now. Wait a minute. No mob ever ruled me yet, and no mob ever will. Now, you men clear out of here. So start shooting. All right, man. Let's go have a drink. He'll turn him loose. Yeah. Marshal, you just better be out of time to cook supper, is all. Well, Marshal, you got what you were after. You made him break up. Yeah. Hey, tell me something. How does uh, Sandy King kill Ed Fisher, anyway? He hit him on the head with an iron skillet. <laughs> but it was provoked. I think the judge will let him off pretty easy. You were going to a lot of trouble to bring him to trial, weren't you? Wouldn't you have, Grizzle? Yeah. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I kind of thought so. And here he is, Miss John. Sandy? It was Joe Grissom. Howdy. Howdy. 
Chester told me all about it. I'm a free man, huh? Yeah, free man. There's a $500 reward, mister. Fisher was wanted dead or alive. Well, now, I'm mighty broke, it's true, but uh, I'm afraid that kind of money just wouldn't do me any good, Grissom. Thanks, just the same. Whatever you say. Well, Marshal, I'll be moving on, I guess. Moving on? Yeah, I've always had a hankering to see California, Chester. I guess this is as good a time as any. Well, but look here. Everybody's expecting you back at Delmonico's to cook up a whole batch of fancy vittles. What do you think this whole row was about, anyway? Tell him I'm sorry, Chester. I was just cooking to pay off a debt. I don't want to make a living at it. Besides, I hate cooking. Well, I'll be doggone. So long. So long, Marshal. Miss Dillon, ain't you going to stop him? The, the men are going to be awful mad. He's a free man, Chester. Funny thing is, that's how the men wanted it. Smoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Parley Bear is Chester, Georgia Ellis is Kitty, and Howard McNair is Doc. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Armed Forces Radio Service to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke.